All right. I hope everyone can hear me. Welcome everyone to today's lunch and learn session hosted by Mobile Corp. My name is Peter Johnson and I am the director of managed services at Mobile Corp. I recognize many of you who are on this call and I hope you find today's uh, event very valuable. This lunch and learn from Mobile Corp's customers is titled Connect, Communicate and Serve. And over the next 45 minutes, we'll hear from three industry experts, each of whom are leaders in their space. The Connect session will be led by CradlePoint, who are recognized as the global leaders in the 5G, wireless, WAN and Edge solutions. The Communicate session will feature an incredible Australian technology success story, Access 4, and focus on collaboration, cloud telephony and Teams calling. During the conserve session, you will hear how to achieve a win, win, win for planet, community and your business with Mobile Corp. The purpose of today's Lunch and Learn is to give you a taste, if you see what I did there, of three of the most inquired about technologies that Mobile Corp offers. I want to thank Tim from Crater Point. Peter from Access4 and Nicole from Mora for joining us today and sharing their experience and insights. You may have, re have registered for this Lunch and Learn because you're interested in learning on a more specific topic um, about one of these vendors or technologies, but I would encourage you to stay on and hear from all three as each of these leaders as each of these people are leaders in their field and Mobile Corp has developed deep partnerships with each of them so we can bring value to your business. Also, each session will be around 10 minutes um, and the view is that you can go on a deeper dive with Mobile Corp following today's event. Before we get started, I will just like to add that the session is being recorded and we will be sharing with that after, with you afterwards in three separate 10 minute videos. We also have a special promotion offer for each vendor, especially Mobile Corp, Mobile Corp's customers. And throughout the event, please put your questions in the Q&A tab and we'll answer these at the end of the session. So first of all, we will start off with Access 4. So basically when the pandemic hit, like many businesses found that they needed to upgrade their telephone system. And we also needed to upgrade our collaboration tools. Mobile Corp have implemented access for cloud telephony, Microsoft Teams calling, and now use the new SMS gateway in our own business. Some of you may have received an SMS today to remind you about today's event. This was actually sent out by our access for SMS gateway. So we know how great the access for solutions are from our on hand experience. Peter Elden from of Access 4. Over to you. Brilliant, Peter. Thank you very much for uh, the invitation to come along and uh, also congratulations on a fantastic first name. Let me just uh, share my screen. Get out of the way. You guys should be able to see my screen now. So again, thank you very much to uh, Mobile Corp for this opportunity to come along and talk to you wonderful people. And we do appreciate you guys taking time out of your day to speak to us. So as Peter said, my name's um, Peter Elden. I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing at Access4. And uh, today we're going to have a bit of a chat about how unified communications and hosted telephony can help businesses navigate a, a couple of the challenges that we're, we're all facing today, uh, namely um, hybrid work uh, post COVID and also the war for talent, which is, which is ongoing. So um, before we get into that, I just want to talk a little bit about exactly what we're talking about here when we say, um, say UC. Um, so UC is a new CAS is unified communications as a service. Um, we're an Australian vendor um, we build our whole hosted solution in the cloud and we're very much a partner on the organization. And so what that means is um, we, we only deal with organizations like Mobile Corp uh, for really good reasons. We, we, we're experts at UC and, and hosted telephony, 
but mobile corp are experts on on you guys and we find that's a really good partnership when we can bring the specialty skills from a vendor standpoint and then we have uh, organizations like mobile corp peter and the team uh, who, who are advocates for their customers and then that means we deliver great technology but more importantly good customer service as well um and uh, we're, we're award winning as well which is which is which is always beneficial so um what exactly is unified communications Let, let's have a quick chat about that so you see is, is effectively it's a, it's a collection of technology so it's things that you will be using today so things like um you know your voice um hosted telephony uh video so teams are on net right now or it could be zoom um your chat that you, you'll be using your instant messaging your presence and your collaboration tools and it's all of those brought down to a single point and i don't mean a single point as in a location i mean a device so rather than having these uh, separate siloed solutions that you use on multiple different devices and a telephone on a desk to be able to use all this it brings them all back to one point be it a laptop or a, or a smartphone and because of that it makes it very very flexible you can now pick this up and move and take that technology with you but where the real benefits come around unified communications to businesses is when we include our external communications as well as our internal so if you think of all those things i just mentioned there so your chat and your video and your presence and your collaboration most of those organizations are using for inter-office communication so in in between departments and, and other branches but where the real benefits come around you see is when you involve your customers in that so what i'm talking about there is taking your 1300 your 1800 your extension lines on individual desks and bringing that into your voice and your video and your chat and your collaboration and that really frees up your communications and really democratizes your telephony because what that means is you know in hybrid work no matter where your staff are working that same telephony uh, extensions 1-800s press one for sales that follows them it follows them to the office it follows them home or wherever they are to work which gives a really consistent uh, customer experience to those end consumers now because of that this is very much the modern, modern workplace and all you need to do is to, to do a quick google on hybrid work on a war for talent and you're going to see a ton of articles around how these are two of the larger challenges facing businesses and you know off the back of a challenge are very much opportunities around businesses that embrace technology to be able to deliver flexible work and, and really widen their hiring ability to really take opportunities for businesses that aren't so there's tons of articles around how from post covid you know there's a real shift in how em employees want to work but then the challenge is as employers how do we make sure we've got the right level of governance um customer experience and accountability when people are now working remotely as well we've also see all all um you know the challenges around hiring I, I don't know if you guys are trying to hire at the moment but we very much are and 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 you know one of the first questions i get asked in interviews these days is around uh, our hybrid work uh, policy and and it really is now a, a a an ability to to attract good employees and more importantly retain good employees if you've got the technology to be able to deliver that well uh, and I've got plenty of those slides as well if you if you want to have a look at that uh, and, and we can we can pass this through and we'll talk a little bit about those individual uh, uh, challenges in a minute but just talking quickly about what we do differently so what we do at access Four is we take those best of breeds uh, you see products so things like um, you know Microsoft Teams that we'll talk about Cisco Webex and then hosted telephony solutions like UC Express and, and, and Broadsoft and we plug that into the one solution that makes it very easy for a mobile cop to work, use so very effectively what we're saying is you can start a journey with a hosted telephony solution so that really frees up your um, your telephony from being stuck in your office and makes that available anywhere 
and then on your journey upgrade that to a full UC solution down the track with, with minimal impact into your business. So a very flexible solution that really helps you no matter where you are on that on that UC journey. So it doesn't have to be all or nothing. So let's have a little bit of a chat about some of the trends that we're, we're seeing in businesses around hybrid work and 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 um, and and the war for talent. So number one is that the workforce is, is very much more dis dispersed. We'll, we'll have seen that, you know, the challenge was that the genie came out of a bottle post COVID where, you know, everyone works super hard from home to keep businesses operational. And now businesses said, OK, I would like you all go back to an office and employees are like, well, hang on a second. If it was good enough, then it should be good enough now. And, you know, there's a fair argument there now. What I'm saying here is not we should be 100% hybrid or 100% remote. That there's clearly very good reasons to be in an office around collaboration and team culture building. But there's also some productivities and some flexibility gains in, in providing hybrid work. And our argument today is that technology will give you the same level of accountability and, and, and governance as if they were sat in an office. And the guys from Mobile Corp can show you that in demos and um, um, proof of concepts post this. We're also seeing that a lot more meetings are happening online, as, and, and I think this is a good example. Pre-COVID, these type of events would have been in, in person. So we all would have went to a room and we would have had a nice lunch, but it would have took a full day of our day to be able to see this information. So online meetings, super productive, you know, the, the birth of the 15 minute meeting, which is fantastic. Bringing customers into that for a UC just adds to your customer experience and adds to your efficiency. We're also seeing that the employee experience is very much linked to the customer experience. And we're seeing this mirrored all the way through. So if you're not letting your staff work remotely, um, they're grumpy. Your customers get a bad experience. If you are letting them work remotely and you don't have a technology, your, cust your customers are having a bad experience and it's making your staff grumpy. We're, we're tied in together, customer and employee. And we're seeing a real change, uh, a change in the regard in employees as well. So we're seeing a significant number of the workforce change to, to be Gen Z and millennial and, and their consumption and use of technology and expectation of technology is very different as well to Gen X and, and previous ones. So a couple of stats on that, 65% of the workforce um, has more doubled um, from a, from a, a, a remote, remote workplace. And 63% of employees are spending more than two hours a day in maintenance online. I'm certainly more than that. And the one that's really interesting is that one around millennials. So three quarters of the workforce will be millennial by 2025. And 75% of the workforce millennial within a couple of years. So when we do some surveys around some end users, we get some ideas of, of some of the challenges that they're facing. And what we see is, you know, low employee, employee productivity and engagement in a hybrid work. It, that's the number one concern for businesses. Um, we also see that they worry about people got being become more siloed and then those business tools being very fragmented, which then feeds into that, that, that siloed um, business units. You see can help in all of those. It can it can show the activity and availability, and it also can free up from a fragmentation. Then we look on the other side. You know, there's a real pressure on brands now to deliver a, a level of customer experience that is pre-COVID, and hybrid work done incorrectly without the right, right technology really causes challenges around that. So again, the, the guys at Mobile Corp can very much talk about how UC can deliver those two benefits uh, in that hybrid work environment. So uh, I don't have a lot of time, so I just want to talk quickly around Microsoft Teams. And the reason we talk about Teams is because there's 180 million active users out there, and you guys are probably sitting with Teams on your, your desk right now. So it's a great change management tool for your staff. They're already using it for internal communications. Our suggestion is that you bring in your external communications, those 1-300 and those one hundred numbers, and you join that in. And the reason for that is because it, it really delivers a great customer experience for, you, for your, your consumers, but also your staff. 
the, the speed of use, the flexibility, it's all there for, for your customers and your staff are already using that interface so that change management is very easy. But what this gives us is a, a flexible, redundant access anywhere solution that gives you all of those telephony solutions that you'd expect in an enterprise solution. So things like, you know, uh, call queuing, music on hold, CRM integration, integration, IVR. So, you know, press one for sales, press one for tech, for tech. All of that can be available, but delivered in that Teams interface that your staff are using. On top of that, there's some really cool tools around um, call center analytics. And you'll probably sit there and go, well, we don't really use call centers. Again, thinking about in that hybrid work environment, this call center analytics becomes really powerful. So seeing who's on a call, who isn't on a call, who's taken a break, how many missed calls you've had, really powerful as a business owner to tell me how my dispersed workforce is working. And very quickly, because I am conscious of our time, uh, the last thing I want to talk about is communications continuity. So I'm sure as a business owner, you're thinking about business resilience and IT security. Well, you should be talking about and thinking about communications continu continuity as well, because that is a, another issue around businesses that kind of gets left to the to the to the the side, but is a real risk to your business in in both a malware attack and and from a, a loss of telephony, but also just from the availability of that. So you should be looking at your telephony to see to make sure it's secure, so that it can't be hacked and someone sends your phone number to a a organization of ill repute, but it's always available so that if something happens to your business, your building, and um, there's no power, um, you know, there's a fire, your staff can still work. Um, but also if something happens to your provider, so if if, if, uh, if an attack happens to Mobile Corp, how, how good is their systems and their vendors systems to make those available? And then on the back of that, how redundant are those? So are they, do they have contingencies in place to make sure that if there is an attack, you're not affected and, you're, and your, your consumers aren't affected and that your systems keep working? Um, very much at Access Forum with Mobile Corp, we can say hand on heart that that is the case. We deliver a redundant, always available uh, network that's got multiple solutions tied into it to make sure that when we are attacked and we see attacks every day, that we've got the security and um, resources in place that it doesn't uh, um, um, become a breach and that we've got uh, systems in place to make sure that if an area is attacked, that we've still got redundancy to keep those provided. So your phone system should always be available. It should always be available no matter where your staff are. And in an attack, it should always have redundancy there to support that. If you've still got a phone system sat in your office, unfortunately, that is not the case. And just because you're in the cloud doesn't mean it has all those things. It's it's your due diligence to go back and talk to your provider and ask them of those things. I know the mobile cop guys will very much be able to give you the answers on that because we can provide those as well. And that's a, a, a network diagram of ours, which is very techy. But again, we can go into more detail on on that. So I am over time. I have been naughty. Apologize to Michelle and Peter and the team. Um, the final thing I want to say is that the Mobile Corp team have put forward a, 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 an offer, which which we're very much getting behind. So the number one would say is that they're offering a free trial of a solution for over 20 seats. I really recommend this. You know, I've really given you a short black. Um, coffee in, in relation to, to this, more than happy to talk individually on longer terms, but a really good way of seeing what we're talking about is getting these guys to run this up and show you that you can, they can do that separate to your current phone solution and you can really see the benefits of it, but they'll do that as a free trial and we'll support them on that. And after that trial, uh, if you want to go ahead with that, they'll provide free porting and porting means moving your phone numbers over to our network and that's a costly affair. They're going to do that um, complimentary and we will support them on that as well. So again, a ton of information done quickly. Uh, the short answer is chat to the mobile cop guys. They're amazing. They understand what we do. They understand what you guys need and they'll be able to put both of those together. So with that, I will shut up. Thank you very much for everyone's time and I'll 
um, bring Peter back in from Mobile Corp. And again, thank everyone for uh, listening to me. Great. Thank you very much, Peter, uh, for sharing your knowledge and your insights. And my, pl just my reminder, pleasure, mate. I'll, I'll leave you to it. Thank you. And just a reminder, guys, if you have any questions for Peter around the Access 4 uh, system, don't forget to pop them into the Q&A tab uh, just at the top of your screen. So next up, we have Nicole Stevens from Morop. Morop works with MobileCorp to provide our customers with a device retrieval, reuse, and recycling program. A number of our customers on the call today are already experiencing uh, the Morup buyback at first hands. Nicole will share with you how to reduce your e-waste, achieve your ESG goals, and generate revenue when you upgrade and relinquish your unused smartphones tablets and ICT equipment. This revenue can be utilized for new hardware or even could go towards a mobile court managed service. So over to you, Nicole. Thanks, Peter. And I'm delighted to see so many of the existing customers on the line today. I've got a long standing history with the mobile court team. Um, first started working with them over um, 30 years ago when I was at Telstra. Um, before I begin, I'm going to start with a question. I, typically what I do is I can see everyone's faces, but I can't today. So I really want you to think and reflect on this question. And I always ask this at the start of every customer presentation, and that's what do you do today with your upgraded and unused smartphones, tablets and ICT equipment? I'm probably going to guarantee a lot of you are thinking, oh, I don't really do anything. I've got cupboards and drawers. Uh, we may have recycled. You may have dabbled or used someone else. I'm going to show you um, a number of other brands later on. Um, and some will be you'll be quite surprised about who have been doing um, absolutely uh, nothing. Um, so Morup was co-founded by uh, ex-Telstra execs. I am ex-Telstra. I was there for over um, 20 years and most of our um, team are really for two reasons. One is um, John Chambers was head of product at Telstra and he was absolutely horrified at the environmental impact that he's personally had um, because e-waste is growing at three times faster than general waste in Australia. He also looked at the trends and what was happening overseas. Um, and if you've ever bought a new car, you know you can trade in the old. Uh, think of this exactly the same. Um, what you're doing is you're trading in your old uh, hardware, phones, tablets and laptops um, when you get new ones. So we're Telstra's uh, sustainability partner. We're an Australian company. Um, this is all that we do. So we really complement the services of the mobile court team. Um, we can buy back smartphones, tablets, um, and also uh, any ICT equipment, laptops, desktops. Um, I know with Mobile Corp and one of their customers, we've bought back FPOS terminals. Um, our solution does the, the buyback. Um, we do resell the hardware that we purchase that's got value. That's both in Australia and also overseas. We have made a commitment that any hardware that's end of life, like 3G, we won't sell back in Australia. Um, we also donate and we recycle. Customers like that we can really balance three things. One is the solutions um, secure. It is all ISO and NIST compliant and we give you data erasure certificates. There is financial value in the, the hardware and we can help you with your sustainability objectives um, and can give you some reporting that you can put in an annual report um, or to the board. Um, these are a number of the customers um, that we work with uh, across Australia, um, all, you know, massive variety here from, you know, federal government, state government, uh, councils uh, and so forth. I'm going to talk about um, Coca-Cola, so big brand, you know, in the press talking about how sustainable their products. When I first spoke to them, said, what are you doing today? Um, they were doing nothing. They had uh, 600 iPads sitting in a cupboard. Uh, we purchased those, um, returned $60,000 to them over the last three years that we've been working um, with Coca-Cola and this is buying um, or them giving us a box of 50 at a time. We've returned about a quarter of a million dollars um, to them. Landers and Rogers is another one. This is a MITI law firm in Melbourne. Um, they've got uh, 10 um, devices that, that we get you know, at a time they want to make sure that their staff have got the, the latest and greatest. Again, we've returned about 75K. 
Um, our model's super flexible. Um, we understand that you're all different. Um, we can collect from a single site, multi-site, um, you know, anywhere across Australia, uh, someone from home. Uh, we can start from one device. Um, and then we can kind of scale up from there. Uh, definitely in the last 30 years in the mobile industry, what I've noticed is, um, you know, people often do the large fleet upgrades or they're just upgrading as they need. So we can fit in uh, with whatever business uh, model you have. Um, two things that we're really passionate about. One is um, reducing the digital in inequality in Australia. So 5% of what we purchase, we uh, donate. Uh, in particular to those um, in domestic violence situations, Aboriginal communities, and more recently with floods. Um, two uh, customers that we've helped with some kind of customised solutions were Osgrid and, and KPMG. Um, KPMG is what I'm finding a lot at the moment, um, just with COVID, heaps of stuff, um, you know, at home. There's heaps of tech everywhere, sitting in an assistance drawer, someone's got devices at home. I helped them with a, a simple comms message, um, set up boxes for them in each of their capital cities in their kind of tech bars. They sent out a message in a space of two weeks, 400 devices came out and they donated that money to uh, work ventures. Um, sustainability is important to us. We do partner with Mobile Muster. Now, if you've seen them in a Telstra shop or anywhere else, it's certainly not us putting everyone's devices in a box together. Um, we've got a highly auditable, stringent process there. We send off your devices with make, model, I mean, and a manifest. That comes back um, to us and we give you the recycling benefits. Um, that all happens in Australia and it's to R2 standard. Um, finally, um, the benefits to you is that you can upgrade for less. So as Pete mentioned, um, we're flexible from a payment perspective. We can put the credit onto your existing Telstra account. We can set up a new one. Um, you can create it as a tech fund. Some of the customers on the core, we um, return the money back to Mobile Corp and they're using it for professional services or, or managed services. Um, you could even use it on the, the you know, tech that, um, Peter's mentioned before me, um, there is upgrade, uh, sorry, there is, you know, money in the old hardware. If you are using someone else, I would kind of encourage you to, you know, come and see what we pay. Um, most people in our industry cherry pick what they take. Uh, so only take iPhone 7 and above. That doesn't help you with your e-waste solution. What are you going to do with your fives and sixes and, you know, old Samsung? So we'll take absolutely everything. Um, we still are paying um, some money on those older devices. Um, there's no additional cost. So at the start, you saw some boxes. We provide those to you. Um, so we cover the boxes, the collection, erasure, certificates and recycling. I've got three case studies here, totally different customers. One's a fleet upgrade um, that we've done at the, you know, the moment. Um, you know, big bang, over a thousand devices. You can see um, the money there. We've got a medical tech company we've worked with now for the last three years, multiple buybacks. We've done their smartphones, tablets, laptops, um, all, at, all at a different time. And then this is the other use case that we see, as I mentioned. Um, this customer just, uh, you know, sends us 40 to 50 at a time as they need. Um, finally, um, if you've got any questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A. If we run out of time, we'll answer them uh, offline. Um, for anyone who trades in smartphones or tablets before the 31st of August, um, we'll pay an additional 10% um, trading value. Thank you, Peter and the Mobile Corp team. Thank you, Nicole, very generous there with your offer. It's also great to see how uh, e-waste can turn into funding and you'd other solutions for business productivity. And as Nicole said, just a quick reminder that if you do have any questions for Nicole around the more up solution, don't forget to put them in the Q&A tab just above. Our final session today is with Cradlepoint and, and Mobile Corp is the current Cradlepoint APAC Managed Services Partner of the Year. We have deployed some of Australia's first 5G network utilising Cradlepoint adapters and routers. Uh, these include achieving more than one gigabit download and 700 up for the Westpac Rescue Helicopter Base in La Perouse in Sydney. We also um, are routing critical radio over IP traffic for Marine Rescue New South Wales. And we also have a robust secure redundancy for Ticketek 
for all of Australia's largest stadiums. So Tim Evans, he's the Regional Sales Director for Cradle Point, which are part of Ericsson. And over to you, Tim. Thank you, Pete. Thank you all for joining. Um, Pete, I was trying to share my screen with you. Uh, is that presenting now? Definitely can see that one now. Thanks, Tim. Perfect. Perfect. It uh, bounced me the first time. Awesome. So thank you all for joining. Um, what we want to talk about today is that uh, 5G is no longer a future state that everyone dreams about. It is the reality today and it is being used more often and in more places than we probably know. So we're going to run through quickly how 5G is already making a difference uh, in real world businesses. Uh, we're going to run through a pretty cool use case with one of my heroes, Sir David Attenborough. Uh, but first, before we get into all of the fun stuff, let me quickly talk about who Cradle Point is and what we do. So we are the worldwide leader and a pioneer in wireless WAN technologies. Uh, we initially started with 3G, moved through to 4G, and now 5G routers and adapters. Um, multitudes of businesses rely on us for day-to-day -day connectivity, cellular intelligence, and to build uh, reliable and secure networks for IoT, uh, branch sites, digital signage, and uh, failover solutions. Uh, we enable the freedom to connect people, places, and things, and drive better business results. But moving from there, I guess what we want to run through is some of the challenges that business sees today and how we address it. So we commissioned a state of connectivity report. This is our latest one. Um, and you can see there's there's just top four, but there was a, a whole bunch of actual actual actions that came out of it. But the, 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 the underlying theme of all of that is that poor connect connectivity is costing Australian businesses uh, in multiple areas from productivity, from competitive challenges, and uh, also the inability to grow and innovate. <clears throat> Leveraging wireless networking and 5G uh, not only intersects organisations through both productivity and profitability, uh, but also lessens the impact on the environment by uh, not having to dig as many projects for fibre runs and all sorts of things like that by leveraging the uh, the mobile network. Uh, let's quickly run through where we are seeing our use cases apply today. So we talk about diverse and high availability networks. What that means is large to medium or medium to large even site failover, having that ability should weather or people with backhoes, we all know about that one in Australia with some fail failures that we've had, where being able to provide uh, a wireless failover scenario uh, can keep a business up and running. Uh, many of our retailers in Oz use Cradle Point to stay connected so that they can continue to take uh, electronic payments and the like. Day one connectivity and beyond. So we talk about uh, I'm sure many of you on this call have had an experience where you've ordered a, a link and NBN goes, well, we'll have that there in three to six weeks, months, whatever. So that ability to connect a site day one when you need it, when you want it, um, it proves invaluable to many of our customers in construction and retail and uh, ends up probably turning in a lot of instances from a day one connectivity through to a, uh, a, a failover or network augmentation type scenario. Uh, extended reach being able to move the connectivity and the, the access to the to the wide area network from the branch to the vehicle, to a restaurant, to a pop up, uh, and also to the kiosks and digital signage. Uh, and we talk also about simplified broadband management being moving larger sites to primary wireless. So there's a there's a number of sites in Australia that I can I can refer to should we get time or if you want to have a breakout later where we can talk about sites that are running purely on 5G and running hosted unified comms, video, teams, etc. all over that 5G network. Uh, remote experience. So the big one here is obviously remote health. We do a, a lot of things with remote health, but being able to provide that high bandwidth, low latency connectivity means that you get better detail and more information regardless of where you are without that requirement and reliance on wires. Uh, high bandwidth mobile applications, you know, you, you talk about, you know, police car as a node or high definition cameras on trouble sites and things like that. Being able to get access to, to high bandwidth and, and leverage mobile applications in the field as opposed to only having that kind of connectivity in a branch. And our newest and latest one is private cellular networks. So we're work, working more and more with the carriers to be able to provide private cellular networks on large campus sites such as ports, prisons, universities, etc. 
Uh, now for the use case. So I I grabbed this one because I I really love it. I think it's an amazing uh, use of of technology to to do something cool. So Sir David Attenborough had launched his Green Planet series, which I'm sure many of us have seen. But off the back of that, BBC actually set up a 5G powered uh, AR augmented reality experience where you could book a time, um, log in with your your phone, and actually run through the Green Planet. Uh, documentary in a in a 3D augmented reality environment using your phone, and they also had uh, Sir David turn up virtually and uh, and was transformed as a hologram to actually do the presentation. Um, so that's that's one example. Now that's that's a little bit pie in the sky for most of us, but there are so many others we're talking about with with automation. You would have seen announcements about uh, some of our retailers going automated in their delivery centers and pick pick and pack centers. Um, but as I said, you know, 5G as a branch, 5G in vehicle, so vehicle becomes the branch, are all relevant use cases that get used today. Why do customers choose Cradle Point? Here's just a few points, and these are actually points that were gleaned from customer discussions that we've had. We've actually polled our customers um, as to why they choose Cradle Point and why they continue to choose Cradle Point um, in their network. Um, there's just a few. The guys at Mobile Corp, as mentioned, were our uh, partner of the year, I think, and also hold probably the record for being most partners of the quarter, if I recall, over the last three and a half years I've been here. So I would strongly recommend you reach out to your Mobile Corp, more mobile corp account rep and, uh, and talk to them about the survey that they can run to see if your location is 5G ready for a wireless WAN solution. And that is me done. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, Tim, for those insights around how the 5G network and intelligent credit point hardware can open up new wireless network possibilities for Mobile Corp's customers. Well, our lunch has been very insightful today, and we have some special offers which our three partners have made available to Mobile Corp's customers uh, who are on this session, and details will also be emailed to you in the next day or so. Uh, so as you can see on the screen with Cradle Point, we're offering free 5G site assessments for your business locations. With Access 4, we are, we are going to offer free porting on all solutions and free trials on solutions over 20 seats. And with more up, we're going to upgrade to when you upgrade to 5G devices um, for less with 10% more buyback value. All right, so as I did mention, um, we if you had any questions to pop them up in the Q&A tab up the top. So today we'll have we'll have uh, some time for some questions. So if you can gather your questions and pop them up, if you think of them afterwards, as I said, just email them through uh, to myself or your current mobile corp uh, representative. Let's give a couple of time, a bit of time for some questions. I can already see that there is one up there. So I can see the first question has come up. It's from Rob um, and it's for uh, yourself, Pete, around Access 4. So I'll just read it out, Pete. It says that we use a SASPOS via Access 4 with uh, MS365 teams as the backbone. We have some desk phones. We have some desk, sorry, with hard phones. If someone calls on teams, the desk phone will not ring. It only rings if the extension or DID is called. Rob asks why. I I would say there'll be a, a either a reason why we that can be fixed or there'll be a good reason as to why it's happening. But um, more importantly, let's get that looked at for you. So um, certainly come into, I'm assuming that's through Mobile Corp. So mm -hmm. um, if not, um, whoever it is, just give us a uh, talk to them and they'll work with our team and we'll get that working how you would prefer it to do if that's not it, if, it, if it's not in case how you want it to work. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, Pete. So, yes, Rob, um, as I said before, we'll share this pack. Um, you can also email me, I'll share my email address shortly um, and we can have a look at that as into why it's not working. Thanks, Pete. Next question we have from uh, Michael Smith, and it's for yourself, Nicole. That's so it's, fine. I can just read it. So, yeah, okay. great. Yeah, yeah, so it's just a question around um, with device trading. Do they have to be fully unlocked? If we have any still locked to a person's IT account, can they be taken? 
Um, so for us to access the device and do a secure data write, they need to not be under any incumbencies. That includes both activation locks and also MDM. Um, if they are, we do come back and um, let you know and hopefully you can remove them. Um, I do have, we work very closely with the Mobile Corp team and also the team at, at Apple and Samsung. So I've got particular tips and tricks from them um, on how to get devices um, yeah, unlocked. Yeah, it's definitely a, uh, definitely a curly ball when it comes yeah. back, but yeah, there are ways, um, Michael, of how we can yeah. do it. One of the things I do provide as part of a, a bit of an onboarding, um, which takes about 30 minutes, is I spend a bit of time just to understand what your current business processes are, how people order, what's the role of IT, what's the role of kind of mobile corp. And then we look at how to implement sustainable practices back into your business. And I've done a bit of research on what's important to employees. So um, this this whole locked issue comes up in every conversation. I, I've got some you know ideas and thoughts and tools you can use um, yeah to try and uh, tackle it. So when the employee does give you the phone back, it's actually unlocked. Mm. All right, great. Thank you, Nicole, for that explanation. Uh, if there's any more questions, please pop them in the chats. Um, and like I said, if you do think of any afterwards, we're always happy to help um, talk about them through. So I'll just do a little wrap up and if a question does come through, I'll read it out. So look, firstly, I'd just like to thank our speakers, Nicole, Pete and Tim, and also you who have tuned in the customers um, for today's session. We appreciate your time and we hope you have found this lunch and learn informative and useful. So please have a great afternoon. Reach out to your Mobile Corp account manager or personally to myself, Peter at mobilecorp.com.au and we can go into a deeper dive into Cradle Point, Access 4 and more up. So thank you once again and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank Thanks you. guys. Thank you everyone. You know.